powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. Russ has the night off. Well, the weekend is here, and so is winter for much of the state. Gray, dreary skies will be the star this weekend, but not without the help of supporting acts, heavy rain and cold. And don't forget that shot of snow also heading this way. Well, Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, we had a nice five days of fall this year. <laughs> yeah, he's exactly <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, we're going to really kind of luck out in the Billings area. We're going to get a little snow, but, but really not that much. Let me show you what's happening right now. You can see the jet stream kind of in a, a zonal flow from west to east, and there's your storm already starting to make its way into the region. But let me show you how much snow the computers are still saying we're going to get here in Billings. Uh, maybe just some light snow for us. Elsewhere, you're going to see anywhere from 6 to 10 over Bozeman. In Livingston, 10 to 14 at Butte, 14 to 20 at Helena, 14 to 20 at Great Falls, and all the way up to 2 to 4 feet. Still, still, still possible up there by Cutbank. And so take a look at this. We've got a number of winter storm warnings all over the place, ranging anywhere from like a 3 to 15 to 36 inches of snow around the state. Bear Tooth could see maybe 10 to 15 inches of snow there. We've got winter watches, winter advisories, all for heavier snowfall, even in Yellowstone National Park and the southwest corner of the state. And look at this. We even have this a flash flood watch for Glasgow for prolonged rainfall through Tuesday uh, and also like wind advisories on Fort Peck and uh, some more snow expected up across the High Line. It's going to be a busy couple of days as we head into the weekend. You know. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, with our forecast, it's heavy snow and winds could damage power lines and leave us all in the dark. Now, taking steps to prepare can help if the power does go out. Q2's David J joins us now with some important information as we head into this storm. David. Uh, Janela, Northwestern Energy is anticipating the possibility of tree and power line damage in some of those areas that uh, Bob had mentioned. Crews are ready for power outages, and the company has some advice. Northwestern chips include uh, plugging appliances directly to a generator, never to plug that generator into the home's wiring. Also, avoid uh, refrigerators, so avoid opening refrigerators and freezers. Stock up on non perishable foods and have a flashlight and fresh batteries ready. And Northwestern reminds you to use uh, non electric space heaters in well ventilated areas and to be ready to clear snow from furnace and appliance vents. And uh, Jody Black from uh, Northwestern also suggests signing up for text message updates or using the company's online power outage map. And more safety tips from Northwestern Energy are on our online story at ktdq.com. Janelle? All right, thanks, David. Now, did you know there are more than 500 Montana Department of Transportation snow plows across the state? Well, there are, and crews say they're ready to hit the roads and tackle this incoming storm as well. The Helena unit alone is responsible for 500 lane miles of road, and across the state in a major winter storm, MDT plows combined travel enough to circle the earth twice. Helena section crew leader Matt Comac says the vehicles are constantly maintained, especially since they're also used as dump trucks in the summer. So as the temperatures and snow start falling, look out for those plows. We will be out there keeping an eye on our bridge decks, even if you don't see a, a flake. But as soon as you see a flake, you, you will see a, a snow plow. We're 24 seven and uh, yeah, we don't goof around. Now, MDT asked for the safety of everyone. The drivers stay five car lengths behind a plow while it's clearing the road. A proposed gravel pit in southwest Billings takes another step forward despite opposition. Today, Yellowstone County Commissioners approved a special zoning district for a controversial gravel mine at the former Oscars Dreamland location. Now, most residents living in the area are against the mine and today relayed those concerns to the city of Billings, county commissioners, local and state representatives, and the Department of Environmental Quality. One major issue from neighbors is the potential impact on traffic and traffic safety. The good news for you, commissioners, is that my neighbors, your constituents, have created a solution for you to preserve the safety and beauty of this part of Yellowstone County. There's runners, there's bicyclists. This road, it barely holds two cars. You put two semis on it, you barely have space to walk between them. Zoning commission first public meeting, if you create this district, would not happen until after the 30-day protest period runs after the creation. During that... Now, there's now a 30-day waiting process to see how many people contest the zoning request.
Well, new information tonight about Tuesday's grizzly bear attack in the Gravely Mountains south of Ennis. The hunter from Ohio tells authorities after the bear attacked him in the Coal Creek area, he fired multiple shots at the bear until it left. The hunter then met up with other members of his party and was taken to Sheridan for treatment. Now, Fish, Wildlife and Parks officials examined that site and found evidence the bear had been wounded, but so far have not located the bear. This was the third bear attack in that area this month. Authorities in Park County, Wyoming are looking for information on what appears to be a grave site found on private property. A post on the Sheriff's Office Facebook states the grave was found in the Polecat Bench area north of Powell off of Wyoming Highway 294 back in August. Now cadaver dogs do indicate that human remains may be in the grave. As you can see, the site is covered by about six feet of sandstone with a white homemade metal cross. Now, the cross has the name Morgan cut into it with the numbers 88 and 03 on top. A necklace is attached to the cross with rings threaded onto it. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Park County Sheriff's Office. Well, the name of a local military hero will now have a permanent spot on the Montana State campus in Bozeman. The future Veterans Support Center located inside Romney Hall will be named after Staff Sergeant Travis Atkins. Atkins died when he threw himself over a suicide bomber in Iraq to protect three of his fellow soldiers in June 2007. Well, not only will the Veterans Support Center bear Atkins' name, but it will also undergo an upgrade in size. Right now, it's about 875 square feet. After the $32 million Romney Hall renovation, it will total about 3,000 square feet. We see a grand significance in this. We're able to put the name of a local hero, a Medal of Honor winner, a soldier who sacrificed himself onto a space inside this historic building. We think that's very special. When it's completed in 2022, Romney Hall will house 19 new classrooms with space for 1,000 students. Well, there's more news from across our state tonight. As the campus undergoes renovations, the city of Bozeman is also growing by the day. That growth means challenges. We'll show you its latest growing pains. We'll have that and more tonight at 9 on The CW. But first on tonight's 530 News, neither rain nor snow can stop Saturday Live, but it will change where you'll find it this year. Check out all you need to know. And later in sports, Scott sets the table for your Cats and Grizz in tomorrow's conference football openers. You're watching MGN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.